Good morning to one and all. It's another beautiful day here in Northern California. We are so blessed to live in this place. I want to give you a quote this morning from uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, and I've added two words, but she said this, we do not have to become heroes overnight, just a step at a time, meeting each thing that comes up, seeing it is not as dreadful as it appeared, discovering we have the strength through God, to stare it down. Here was a lady who lived through the Great Depression, lived through World War I, lived through the Great Depression, had a husband with polio, lived through World War II, tremendous stress on her family. And she says this, we do not have to become heroes overnight, just a step at a time, meeting each thing that comes up, seeing it not as dreadful as it appeared, discovering we have the strength through God, to stare it down. This is your daily Elmira Baptist Church update for Monday, July 6th, 2020. We had encouraging services yesterday, and if you were not able to participate yesterday, whether in person or from home, let me encourage you to find those on Sermon Audio or YouTube later on today and take, a, take some time to watch a sermon in the morning uh, regarding happy is that people whose God is the Lord and in the evening about true freedom. I have some updates. One is from the Liviocos. I was asked last night about them and I did not have this until this morning, but let me just mention uh, they wrote to me directly. Mrs. Livioco wrote to me directly and said we would like to thank those who shared through their gifts towards the hospital bills and doctor's fees. It is an uphill climb to meet our financial obligations, but God providing, but God is providing. Our total hospital bill was $50,000. She goes on to detail some of the events that led to that bill. They prayed and prayed. They're where they're at in the Philippines. People do, are not allowed or, or are not, uh, will not leave the hospital until their bill is substantially paid. Uh, Mrs. Livioco continues. She said, I talked with the doctors. They told us to settle the hospital bills so that we could go home, settle their professional fees, um, so that we could go home uh, after overstaying uh, for staying another five days in the hospital. God provided funds to partially pay our hospital bill and a guarantor for our hospital balance. The guarantor is a mayor of a town where we had a Bible study years ago. So they've left the hospital. They, she goes on to say we still have a balance to pay of about $18,000 in the next two weeks. Thank you, those of you who given will get our share to them. She said, amazing how God provides for his children's needs. I could not believe we need to pay uh, more uh, in this pandemic. Um, so humbled with the love shown to us by our brethren here, referring to the Philippines and out of the country. Praising God, thankful to those who sacrificially gave and to those who would uh, send messages to know how we were doing. Those messages have been like medicines to our hurting and sometimes discouraged hearts in those days. She goes on to say he is smoothly recovering and had his first checkup after tests in laboratory. His medicines were reduced from 18 medicines to 13 medicines, and then he has another checkup after two weeks. So continue to pray for the Liviocos. Um, I also heard from uh, Bradley and Ashley Kubik in Mongolia today, they had a small fire in the building where they lived. Uh, we've had those in, in, when we were in Mongolia as well. And Lord protect everyone. They are safe. There is no injury. He had to deal with some of the first responders as they came. He dealt with them in Mongolian. Did well. I'm proud of him. Keep praying for the Cubics as they work through uh, the, the quarantine orders there in Mongolia, trying to minister to people there. So those are a couple of prayer requests for you this morning. Pray for the Liviocos and their ongoing medical bills that need to be paid for. And pray for the Cubics as they have several plans for this summer to reach their community for Jesus Christ. I want to read a longer passage to you this morning. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I'm going to read the first 13 verses. Listen to this. Ecclesiastes 3.1 To everything there is a season, 
and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their hearts, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is a gift of God. Just focusing there on verse 11, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. We go through seasons of life. You've gone through them, I have. Seasons where things just seem to fall into place. Boom, 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 boom. And, and our goals are accomplished so quickly. And then other seasons where nothing falls into place. And you just never do accomplish that goal that you thought God had set in front of you. Both seasons are necessary. And God makes everything beautiful in his time. So it's a difficult season for me. It's a difficult season for many of you. But God will use this too to, be, to accomplish his plan. And let's stay focused on moving forward and what God has for us. Because he is still in control. We'll meet again tomorrow.